Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Marielle, back with another video. Um, I feel like wearing my little Haiti scarf today for the purpose of this video. And I figured since I have on my Haiti scarf, I might as well put on a red dress. I might as well do me a little wooby woo. -wah. I mean, you know, I want to talk about Haiti and my trip to Haiti. Yes, I recently just went to Haiti. Now, I know I got a little backlash from a few people that talked about how I got on the internet and I was bashing Haiti and oh, Haiti's not all like that. Oh, you're the type of person that, you know, you talk crap about your country because you're in a foreign land and you don't. Okay, 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 hear me out. I wanted to speak about my experience when I touched down in Haiti. I can't emphasize it enough. That was my experience when I touched down in Port-au-Prince. But I had the luxury of actually going to Wanamet not too long ago. Now, I happen to have a special friend who's from there, and um, I needed to check my passport and do certain things. And where I couldn't go to Port-au-Prince, where I'm from, I was able to go to Wanamed and handle my business. Now, this person lives literally right by the gate. Like, you could see the, the gate as you're in his family home. So I was like, oh, this is awesome. He told me, hey, let's go, I'll accompany you. You can handle everything you need to handle. And I was kind of reluctant, but I had always heard that what I met is like a whole nother Haiti. Like there was like, there's Haiti and then there's Ocap and there's Haiti and there's what I met. So they said there was none of that stuff going on. So I said a prayer and I went, I got on a bus. I looked out the window like a little kid and I, we stopped in Santiago. What happened was we actually got a ride from one of his co-workers who happened to drive tourists around. They were going to Puerto Plata. And so we took a ride with them and it was 1 a.m. on Saturday. It is 4.22 a.m. And I left about three hours ago, so I'm in the capital. It's a party bus, everybody's drinking and there's loud music. I was able to get this little bit of footage because they turned the music down for a second and turned the lights on, so. We got to Santiago around 10.30 in the morning and then got on another bus and within three hours, we were at the border. Now, at the touchdown, things were a little crazy. Um, I brought one little carry-on with me because he told me, he said, you know what, travel light. People were, the motorists were, hey, you need a ride, you need a ride. But then he, he's kind of popular in his hometown, so everybody kind of knew who he was. And it was like, oh, he's so used to, because he goes back all the time. He was just like, yo, 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 chill, man, chill, chill. Like, he was just like, and I'm nervous as hell. I'm trying to record. And I actually was told you could get hit for recording because people come down here and... The only people who'd be recording are obviously tourists and they don't know what you're gonna do with this footage. There's enough bad images of Haiti, so they are very sensitive about their crap. They're like, uh-uh, you're not about to come here and record. I was like, no, I'm Haitian. I just, I've never been here. I was like, nah, bro, you know, I'm trying, I'm, I'm being cool with them. So I didn't I didn't act like I was, I was like, no, 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 because I'm Venetian, like, no, no, no. He's like, nah, they will hit you. So dude I was with was like, nah, they're not, they're not hitting you on my watch. Like, come on, let's go. So. We start walking. He's so close. He, he lives so close to the border that when we got off the bus, we didn't even have to take a taxi. We literally walked to his home. It was right there. So soon as you cross over, there's this river where women are washing and kids are bathing. And that river happens to be what separates the two countries. I didn't even know. I would later find out, find out that that river separates DR also from so there's like a bridge and the gate is on top of the bridge and the river's underneath so you cross that river cross the bridge and you're in a whole nother country I also found out that this river is called the dahaban river which is the river it's in the northernmost part of the international border between haiti and dr it also got the nickname massacre river because um about 30 french buccaneers were killed by spanish settlers back in 1728 so there's a lot of history here we get there and there's activity people are moving Sellers are selling, kids are playing. Right now, with everything going on with the country, even though when I made is its own thing, schools are still shut down. So kids aren't going to school. So there were a lot of children playing. The food vendors, the, I mean, you name it, people are selling it. I don't know, Haiti don't, they don't really do stores. When you need stuff, you get it on the side of the street. And where he is, again, he lives by the border and there's what's called mache. So they go to the mache, which is where you, um, what, was, what could I, like a flea market? So you go and you buy everything you need from food to household products, to clothes, to pepe, everything. So 
I'm just taking it all in. I'm trying to record. I don't want to be rude. I got my phone right there, so the footage may not be that good because I really was sneaking, but I'm just taking it all in. At no point did I feel nervous. I didn't feel scared. He's holding my hand, kind of like, stay close to me. But it wasn't like a stay close to me because they might snatch you up. It was like a stay close to me because you don't know where you're going. So we get to his family home. Oh my God, they welcomed me. They were so kind. They were so nice. They fed me. They fed me. They fed me. They fed me. We hung out. We drank. We talked. We, I mean, it was, um, it was awesome. I got to do what I needed to do. And um, we even went out to a club. I had an amazing time. This particular guy, this DJ, was so good. He started playing gospel drill music. So I'm in the club like, what a beautiful not not me in the club. Like it was it was such a vibe. Like we had such a good time, and um, it gave me this like sense of wow. Like there was somebody who specifically was like, you know, you getting online talking crap about your country. I want to be clear. I was talking about my experience. It wasn't about my country. I made it specifically clear that I know there's a different side of Haiti that I didn't know. And I finally got to experience it at my big age. But I'm so grateful I went on this trip. Um, I want to apologize if I made it seem like Haiti was just this overall S-H-I-T hole, like a a certain president has said but anyway um i got to enjoy the haiti that i saw this second time around one i met was 10 out of 10 what well, i can't wait to go back i'm actually planning to go back i had i had such a good time um if you just take a moment while you know you're in a third world country infrastructure is not you know there's not these high-rise buildings and electricity the lights kept going out in the middle of the night once you get past all that, because I knew I was in Haiti, so I wasn't like, oh, this hotel is not a five star, darling. Oh, you, you leave that over, over there. Once you get past that, I sat, it was one moment where I sat in front of his family owned store, they own a store, and I sat in front of the store and I was just taking it all in. And you see the lady who's selling food. She comes every day at three o'clock. She sells food out of a wheelbarrow. She has this big pot of rice and she puts the, the stew chicken in like a bucket and she has avocados that, I mean, and people are lined up. People are lined up to eat this food because it's finger licking good. This lady apparently been doing this for years. I'm sitting there and I'm taking her in and I'm taking in the other guy who's selling all the creams and the toothpaste and the lotion and if you need any type of medication in a wheelbarrow. You're looking at the little kid who's going around with his little shoe cleaning kit and he cleans shoes for a living. You're looking at the guy who picks sugar canes and he has a machine that makes juice, sugar cane juice. If you know, you know, and he's got a line everybody is doing what they're doing everybody's doing what they need to do to survive yes it's a very hard life it's it's a lot of struggle but i think this trip made me realize how resilient my people are everybody at six o'clock in the morning you hear them outside you hear them before you hear the roosters you hear them outside the activity has started the stores are opening the people are selling what they're selling at one point there's an old lady who comes around with a gallon of something and I was like, what is she selling? She has a gallon of something and a little bucket of three little teacups with lemon and, you know, to clean them off. And I'm like, what is she selling? And my friend was like, this is tea. This is life-saving tea. And I'm like, what? And my cousin, my, my cousin had just told me earlier, get some tea to cleanse your system. Haitian people, we live by the land. We, I don't know if you know anything about the numbers. And when Corona happened, Haiti had very few deaths. If I find it, I'll insert it there whatever we're doing we we believe in our jiwaf we believe in our garlic we believe in our jonsi we believe in our fay we live off the my aunt has a leaf a plant for every disease every disease you say you have this oh go get some lovely shot you say you have this oh go get some of that we live by that and we're such a resource a resourceful people i sat there and i asked the lady i said yeah she sold a, a, a little teacup of the tea for like 10 cents and we gave her a dollar and she was like overwhelmed a little older lady remind me of my grandma and she's going around every morning like clockwork around the same time the machin la bapin comes around she sells this or the lady with the tea comes around and she sells this and I fell in love with my culture all over again. Mind you, I was a kid when I left. So I that experience opened my if let me let me just put it to you like this. 
If this is the Haiti that I touched down, I probably would have still been there. Aside from not being able to work and not, you know, missing life and technology and some, some of the things, but I could see how the people live and they're happy. The children are happy. The people that have their businesses, they like they there's a lot there's life there. There's life there and I enjoyed it and I can't wait to go back. I will continue it's that part of Haiti, I will go back. And until Port-au-Prince is okay for me to visit, I'll I'll do the Jacques Mel, I'll do the outskirts. Like I got a totally different outlook. So um for the people that thought that I just wanted to talk crap about my country, that's not it at all. I am so proud to be Haitian. I just didn't have a good experience. But now I can compare the two. I've had two different experiences. So now I can get on here with my Haitian flag on and talk about a different experience. If you want to share your experience, start a YouTube channel. So again, you guys, I just wanted to come on here and talk about my trip to Okap. Well, when I met, because Okap and when I met are low, like 45 minutes apart. So I just wanted to talk about my trip to when I met and how much fun I had and how I can't wait to go back and how they treated me so good. They promised me a goat, so I have to go back and get a goat because I like Paso, um, which is fried goat. If you know, you know. I think I ate that the entire five days I was there. It was so good, oh my God. So I ate so good. Um, I, I think the food was the best part like authentic Haitian it was so good so I just wanted to share now a different side of Haiti that I now have an experience not what people have told me not what something that I experienced this is what I'm gonna do on this channel share my experience and so whenever I go back I'll be sure to take you guys along with me but until then thank you for watching